a lovely keynote, GPU on wheels, game of milliseconds, AI powered video conferencing, AI art gallery, data center infrastructure on chip and lots more. The NVIDIA GPU technology conference that is GTC 2020 was packed with awesome news and many interesting sessions. And luckily I happened to take part in some of them. Now stay tuned as I share my personal experience and some of the key highlights. So starting with the GTC keynote by NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wang, it was open to all. So basically there were eight different parts of the keynote and were uploaded to uh, YouTube. You can definitely go through them. Link is in the description. So basically I will um, highlight some of the important details from the keynote. So first, the Bluefield Data Processing Unit. So just, just like your GPU, which is a PCIe device, uh, your Bluefield 2 DPU is also a like PCIe device. You insert it on a PCIe slot. So it features um, data center infrastructure on a chip architecture called uh, DOCA. So basically it comes with, uh, you know, like its own inter network interface ports, um, programmable ARM cores, talking about ARM here, um, just recently you might have heard the news about NVIDIA acquiring ARM and uh, maybe we are seeing some of the roadmap already that NVIDIA has planned with ARM and um, this uh, Bluefield 2 DPU comes with your Ampere GPU as well. So Ampere is the latest GPU micro architecture by NVIDIA. So um, it, it has its, uh, so this uh, has its own variants. I'm talking about Bluefield DPU. So it comes with uh, like your onboard DDR4 8 gigs to 16 gigs of memory. <laughs> and uh, you can definitely you know like use uh, doka sdk to leverage its capabilities and uh, we we have like you have the gpu uh, ampere gpu and you have arm cores and then you have your uh, smart nic and um, your um, network interface ports you know all combined together you have uh, faster compute and you have access to a faster you know like a data transfer latency free data transfer happening together in one device and that is the benefit that is the huge advantage of having this device so uh, researchers working on complex computations you know like they're working in a team a teams across the world or you know like um, let's say there is a graphics rendering task and uh, several teams from across the world uh, like uh, are working on it on a cloud platform and then maybe like uh, some have deployed their real time uh, ai applications and they also need faster compute and latency free data transfer so this device is aimed uh, you know at, you know like people of these segments and i i really think this is a very good addition by nvidia now moving on to the next uh, NVIDIA Reflex and NVIDIA Omniverse like we will be talking about them in more depth because there were separate GTC sessions on the same so for now just uh, like I will uh, you know say a bit about them so NVIDIA Reflex is like it, it features latency free graphics to gamers especially you know who are into esports and then uh, your nvidia omniverse so it is like your uh, it is a 3d 2d collaborative uh, like uh, graphics platform uh, like aimed at uh, you know like vfx designers and uh, your um, let's say game developers you know so yeah of course it is gpu accelerated now the next announcement is about NVIDIA Maxine, which happens to be an AI powered video conferencing platform software development kit. It is aimed at developers who are into video conferencing services such that they can deploy um, your uh, interesting AI features in their cloud. 
and it is fully GPU accelerated. So what are these AI features that we just mentioned? Let's have a look. So starting with, so the NVIDIA Maxine comes with your face reanimation. So the automatically the face will be aligned in the perfect direction. And then uh, like there is this super resolution with which low resolution videos will be automatically scaled to high resolution quality. And then there is this uh, live translation service and uh, developers can also use the AI video compression feature of NVIDIA Maxine to save the bandwidth of uh, internet service providers and also deliver a smooth and hassle free experience to the users. Next uh, announcement is about uh, the GSK and uh, NVIDIA partnership. Uh, so GSK and NVIDIA will be partnering together to create an AI powered lab. So uh, GSK is a British uh, pharmaceutical company. It is a multinational company. And uh, so what they will be doing is this AI powered lab that they will be building together will facilitate the discovery of medicines and fascines. So NVIDIA will be offering its DGX A100 systems and uh, uh, you know like GPU computational expertise uh, with the uh, GSK team and uh, uh, the G uh, they will also get access uh, the GSK will also get access to the NVIDIA Clara discovery platform which uh, like features you know like a collection of optimized computational uh, drug discovery applications and frameworks. In addition to this, uh, they will also get the privilege to use the NVIDIA Cambridge One supercomputer, which is one of the fastest in the whole world. And uh, the next and most uh, surprising announcement, which I felt uh, was the 2 GB variant of Jetson Nano. So the previous model had a RAM of 4 GB. The newer one with will have the 2 GB, uh, 2 GB RAM with almost like roughly half the cost at fifty nine dollars. This this is really a very good addition by Nvidia because uh, like uh, GPU accelerated edge AI will be now much more affordable and it will be open to a much bigger community. The rest of the sessions that I'll be talking about were not open to all. So one needed to have a GTC digital pass to attend the same uh, like with uh, some amount of fees. Um, thanks to one of my uh, friends at NVIDIA, I was able to uh, get a pass and uh, accordingly I was able to attend all these interesting sessions. So like we'll be walking through some of them one by one. So this session uh, called as GPU on wheels uh, was given by um, Gary Hilgeman, the CEO of Robotnics. Uh, so like I really loved this session a lot. and. Uh, this was uh, something very new and interesting to look at from a different perspective. So uh, Robotnics is basically a German company that uh, provides smart city solutions on the go through their uh, like AI products. So uh, one interesting problem statement uh, challenge that was uh, like mentioned by Gary in the beginning of the session was uh, the problem with CCTV uh, surveillance cameras to record smart city events. Now uh, the, uh, the challenge that will happen here is like basically uh, if you want to uh, like uh, collect uh, smart city events in an another area so you'll have to install the camera there and again in another area you'll have to install camera again over there and the process will go on because the field of vision the field of view is limited and also this is this uh, will be very like expensive like uh, you cannot install cameras uh, like you don't want to buy so many cameras right so what is a better alternative to this so um so as gary suggested what robotnix does is like you know uh, what if you install a camera 
uh, like on a truck in a truck so not only it gives you a like a better field of vision but more mobility so you can explore unreachable areas as well and also it is less expensive so this this is really a very smart way to monitor a smart city <laughs> i i really loved this uh, like uh, idea so what are the various uh, use cases uh, like uh, which uh, robotics is working uh, like uh, solving basically so uh, like uh, they are like uh, you know detection of dirty traffic signs uh, random garbage dumps to eradicate environmental pollution and uh, potholes measurement on roads so all these things like if the ai uh, uh, yes one thing i forgot to mention yes uh, robotics has their uh, uh, embedded uh, computing platform called as gustav a uh, gustav that leverages uh, the computing prowess of jetson tx2 and jetson xavier nx for real time ai inference so this device is attached to the camera installed on the truck so yes like i was saying about these use cases that we just discussed so if the truck collects the necessary uh, like the, the the camera on the truck collects the necessary event and uh, there is an ai inference if and if something is wrong based on these uh, use cases like uh, let's say there there is some dirty traffic sign somewhere uh, in the city so the uh, as soon as the inference is done the necessary civic authorities will get a notification the alarm will be triggered and they will just reach to the necessary uh, area and just fix those uh, problems so this is this is really like very smart efficient and also cost effective um and then um, of course like uh, this sounds like a piece of cake but it isn't the complexity involved in implementing this like uh, has many challenges some of those uh, mentioned by um, you know the uh, gary where like you know space management so there needs to be a proper sma- space management uh, to facilitate such that uh, like uh, you know The, the, there is good amount of uh, uh, air flow and uh, there is no heat generated and uh, yes of course there is temperature monitoring involved and uh, proper cable management and of course uh, failure monitoring uh, as well so you definitely want to monitor in case if there is any failure through various logs so you would like to record uh, some necessary events related to hardware specific events or software specific events you'll have to uh log them and uh, that will definitely like help you analyze a bigger part of the problem and accordingly tend to it so uh, in order to know about uh, uh, the work that robotics does do check their website uh, the link is in the description for your reference now the next session was very interesting i liked it very much because i am a gamer myself so it was basically you know um the session's name was the game of milliseconds optimizing e-sport latency for maximum human performance so um latency in e-sports is not a trivial trivial matter imagine a, a supposed to be headshot not happening it can be a gamer's worst nightmare So um this session was delivered by Joseph Spurts who happens to be a research scientist at Nvidia. So basically he highlighted uh, various types of latency, you know, uh, like system latency, human latency. So first of all like you know what is this uh, system latency? so your system latency life cycle begins from your mouse input then um, both your cpu gpu contributing to the render queue uh, followed by your um, you know a display monitor 
so of course like uh, there is a human factor involved human latency involved which also contributes to the overall latency life cycle so your human latency completely depends upon how difficult a task is to complete so it, the task being how difficult it is to shoot a target based on the distance so uh, you know like um, uh there are various ways uh, in which you know joseph mentioned you can uh, you know analyze the system latency yourself the first being by using an iot based event monitor that would be you know collecting the mouse registered uh, clicks so there will be various sensors attached and they will be doing that and uh, other other ways are basically you know um, yes uh, he mentioned one application that he worked with you know various team members called first person science so this first person science is like you know an application uh, it's a tool for you know conducting user studies on first person shooter style tasks so definitely you can check that out uh, there is a github link uh, mentioned it's open source and uh, followed by that there is another way called uh, you know tool called blur busters uh, you, you might be knowing about that if you are an esports gamer definitely and uh, of course like nvidia has uh, you know like developed uh, one uh, technology one platform called uh, reflex uh, reflex for both gamers and developers uh, so it's a v very nice way to understand and reduce system latency so in terms of how the to measure the latency of your computer there is uh, also this interesting thing that will be coming up uh, with various g sync monitor called the uh, reflex uh, reflex uh, latency analyzer so what uh you can like you know game developers and uh, you know any other uh, dedicated gamers like they will get the ability with this reflex sdk you know to measure uh, and control some parts of the system latency um of course like um we uh, have one of the videos uh, like uh, contributed one of by one of our members of nursinard alpha his name is uh, sidan subudi so you can definitely compare the performance of you know of uh, in game performance with both reflex on and reflex off let's have a look so you saw that uh, with reflex uh, like the latency gets reduced by uh, significantly furthermore there are uh, benchmarks for other titles as well which uh, you can use for your reference um, do definitely check uh, this reflex as uh, out and uh, if you have not installed it and you have an nvidia gpu uh, definitely install it if you are an esports gamer it matters a lot so coming to the next session uh, or a series of sessions which happens to my personal best uh, was the nvidia omniverse now they were mainly uh, delivered by jeff kember who happens to be a uh, director of uh, developer relations uh, in nvidia so basically your nvidia omniverse is a 3d simulation uh, you know platform and collaborative platform which is fully gpu accelerated in order to use it you need to have an rtx uh, gpu so um, the advantage offered by omniverse is like you can integrate uh, various tools like unreal engine maya uh, blender and uh, many more uh, similar tools uh, easily with uh, your uh, 
Omniverse and uh, the changes that will be working on your say Unreal Engine will be reflected uh, real time. So a further more explanation to this basically is say you are working on a 3D object in Maya and you are building it. You don't need to like uh, import the environment later and post process and render it. So you can save the time by directly connecting your uh, NVIDIA Omniverse uh, tool to your uh, Maya and while you'll be working on your uh, your 3D objects the changes will be reflected in real time in your um, Omniverse as per the environment that is you know been selected that has been selected so this can be further expanded to uh, you know like various people in a team say like um, um, of the different people in your team will be working on uh, uh, different changes for a particular scene and uh, these changes can be uh, you know like integrated together and uh, you know rendered to create the final scene and then there, there will be no differences and uh, it will be completely you know well optimized and beautiful so uh, if, if when it's uh, rendered via your um, nvidia rtx universe uh, server as you can see in the image so this is like uh, also it features a cross-platform distributed operability meaning uh, you can work in different tools and uh, the, again, the changes will be integrated together and rendered real time by your Omnibus, uh, Omnibus RTX server and yes uh, you will be able to in fact see the final rendered uh, scene on your um, tablet itself or your computer or any device so um, it also like supports live motion capture rendering so in other words basically say like you are capturing um, uh, I mean you are uh, recording a live motion capture and uh, then you can render the necessary uh, like the events collected uh, via your uh, I mean I mean events collected will be directly rendered on your uh, Nvidia Omniverse so you will be able to see the changes directly this is this is really very highly efficient and uh, like uh, in fact cost effective too and uh, yes like uh, you can be on any part of the world uh, collaborate together and work on various graphic simulations and in fact uh, it is also it can be extended to your isaac uh, sdk as well you can create various simulation environments so there are i mean it opens doors to many possibilities in fact i want to explore myself personally i want to build with uh, nvidia omniverse so let's see like uh, i'm really eager to explore this the next was uh, really very something very new and uh, an interesting session to explore basically um, a virtual studio tour with ai artist uh, pinder van arman so he calls his initiative autonomous you know automate art with ai so basically he teaches his uh, robots to paint <laughs> uh, isn't that interesting so um, so he he uh, leverages the jetson platform or so his uh, robots come with uh, jetson and uh, they they learn to paint through various uh, generative uh, adversarial networks convolutional neural networks and uh, you know feedback loops uh, one of the interesting events mentioned by uh, pinder was that um, one of his robot artists was hacked um, basically it generated some gibberish pattern and uh, some sort of message and it was really very funny to you know know something like that so uh, you can definitely check some of his uh, paintings in the AI art gallery, uh, you know, in the GTC uh, uh, 2020 uh, link that is mentioned in the description. And if you want to generate some art with uh, generate some masterpiece uh, with the help of those robot artists, you can definitely take uh, help of the 
autonomous initiative by uh, Pindar. Coming on to the next session named as a deep dive into Merlin recommendation framework. It was very knowledgeable. The session was delivered by Ivan Aldrich, who happens to be a senior manager uh, for the recommender system frameworks team uh, at NVIDIA. So first of all, what's a recommendation framework? So when you browse Netflix, you must have seen there are a list of uh, titles suggested uh, for you to watch. Now, how are these uh, done basically? How are these predictions made? These are done by an AI uh, based recommendation engine working in the backend. So basically like uh, this is made possible all thanks to you know many complicated uh, deep learning uh, neural networks in the pipeline are uh, trained with a huge data set with billions of parameters now there are a lot of competitions involved and of course it will take a lot of time if you follow a traditional cpu based workflow now uh, gpu based workflow will also be fast but Nvidia has a special end-to-end -end GPU accelerated uh, you know, framework for this. It's called as the Merlin recommendation framework to your rescue. It is much faster and uh, definitely you should um, you know like uh, check it out. So basically like um, uh, what, what uh, are the things that you get with uh, the Merlin recommendation framework is, you know, uh, starting from feature engineering and data uh, loading, which is uh, handled by the NV tabular component, uh, you know, like data loading, there is a lot of time send, spent by data scientists on uh, extract, transform and load tasks. So the NV tabular is to your rescue here. And then the, uh, the uh, for the scalable uh, model training, there is huge CTR and for deployment in server for inference, uh, you get uh, the, the Triton. So basically like uh, th these are some of the key components. And uh, I, I really loved uh, one coffee example, uh, you know, like mentioned by the speaker. So in a traditional CPU based workflow, let's say you have trained uh, your model recommendation engine on a huge data set. Of course, it, it must be taking a lot of time, right? Now say that uh, your uh, all the analysis, the EDA that you did, everything is done and uh, you are putting your model to training. You, and uh, once you execute it, it takes time. Okay, you go sip uh, a cup of coffee and uh, several cups of coffee in fact, but uh, you realize that you have done a mistake then uh, uh, what you do is you once again uh, do some sort of ETL task and then uh, you know like uh, it takes a lot of time the ETL process takes a lot of time again you save several cups of, uh, cups of coffee in fact and the process continues you keep on training so basically you come office on time but you uh, don't leave office on time That is, that is you leave late of course I mean, if this continues, it will generally impact your health, right? <laughs> so what is a better approach to this? Like if you go for a GPU based workflow with Merlin, say that uh, you have executed uh, the model training and uh, you realize, hey, I have done this mistake. So of course, like uh, you must have trained uh, on a huge data set, trained your model on a huge data set, right? And accordingly, to perform an ETL task uh, on a traditional CPU workflow, it would have taken time. But now you have a full GPU based workflow uh, with Merlin and that will reduce lots of time. I mean, a lot of time drastically and uh, you can do your ETL in peace and in a matter of few minutes. Uh, that will be complete and you can execute uh, the uh, workflow with ease. So uh, very less number of uh, coffees will be required uh, for the entire process. So you will leave office on time and you will have a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> this was a very nice example. I mean, 
I, I really loved this personally. And in fact, coming to the benchmarks, uh, like uh, do take a pause and analyze them, like, you know, coming to your uh, ETL uh, based ba benchmark or your model training benchmarks or like, you know, deployment in server for, you know, like the inference tasks. Uh, all these things like uh, putting all these benchmarks together like I mean with Merlin the performance is actually off the charts and definitely like if you are a data scientist and you are into recommendation engines do check it out. So coming to the next session on Jarvis AI uh, basically it was uh, delivered by Jonathan Cohen who happens to be senior, senior director of uh, AI software at uh, NVIDIA. So with this uh, framework, basically, uh, you have the actual Jarvis at your disposal, which you saw with, uh, you know, like uh, Tony Stark. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm actually not kidding. So, uh, so what Jarvis AI is basically, you know, like uh, it provides a state of the art end to end GPU accelerated framework, you know, which provides speech, vision and uh, natural language uh, understanding services. So uh, basically like, you know, it comes uh, loaded with a collection of pre-trained models, which scientists and developers can customize as per their, you know, uh, own requirements and uh, it provides a easy to use deployment uh, workflow and provides uh, you know multi-modal services you know like multiple forms of input for conversational AI inference uh, be it uh, speech or vision or text and uh, yeah it's highly reliable for real-time predictions because of uh, very low latency uh, I mean uh, because of minimum latency and uh, so it pro it comes uh, packed with uh, Jarvis Python API uh, for convenience um, and uh, it comes with a Nemo toolkit which uh, you can use for you know like developing the conversational AI application and uh, so why not let's let's watch a video of you know uh, uh, the uh, I mean Misty which is a 3D AI chatbot built with Jarvis AI and rendered with NVIDIA Omniverse, a conversation between the CEO of NVIDIA and Misty. What is the coldest city? The coldest city in the world is Yakutsk in Russia with temperatures around minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter months. So as you saw, you know, Misty was highly dynamic to user inputs and uh, provided very minimum latency and the results were very accurate. And uh, of course, this type of technology is very revolutionary. Now imagine, you know, uh, a place, you know, imagine in a, a library, there is a library or muse museum, there is a 3D hologram. Uh, that is responding to you know uh, the general queries of people i mean really this sort of technology is next gen and uh, nvidia has really done a great work here uh, you know like a thousand thousands round of applause from my side um, so that uh, so that, that's all like we'll be exploring uh, today like uh, the, the, I mean, we learned a lot and uh, it was really very uh, amazing and um, so basically like uh, I, I would like to say personally that the GPU technology conference by NVIDIA was like uh, on a completely different level and uh, I came to learn uh, many new things which I didn't know and uh, the gaming sessions i mean the gpu technology sessions related to gaming were super awesome <laughs> because i am a gamer and you know i hope other gamers if they are watching this video they might have you know you you might also like them and uh, so so that's all uh, for today guys uh, hope you like the content that i showcased uh, with this video so do check out other videos in our channel related to the Jetson Nano and Deepstream SDK. So stay tuned for further updates and please, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel. Thank you.